Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include Jeremy Hunt says he'll weed out the health tourists. Google pledges to modify search rankings in light of EU ruling. Europol demands access to British police files. The EU implements UN principle of the responsibility to protect. Plus, more letters in our postbag, this time on food safety. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the UNIT Nightly News. First, from our homepage. Trying to look deeper into the intention of political statements is mostly difficult. But sometimes, however, it becomes clear what is taking place. This article looks at Jeremy Hunt's very vocal statements about the problems of so-called health tourism overwhelming the NHS. OK, let's break this down. Huge sections of the NHS have been quietly privatised. Virgin, for example, now owns many of the GP surgeries and recently took over child and social welfare services in the southwest. Government policy talks of reform and improvement, but these are just words. In reality, the NHS is being strangled into poor performance, and as it buckles under the pressure, out comes the political rhetoric, such as this sleight of hand from Mr Hunt. The goal is to completely privatise the NHS, forcing a two- or three-tier system, and a system that discriminates based on wealth. That is wrong on every level but most of all, on a human level. We reported last week that the EU had decided against Google in regard to its organisation and promotion of search results, regarding them anti-competitive. Google says it plans to display more links to services offered by its competitors. For more than a decade, people have been using Google as a synonym to looking up something on the web. You'll seldom hear people say they're about to bing something or that you should yahoo that. Now, as I said last week, if you want privacy, security and unbiased results, try duckduckgo.com. Meanwhile, I'm off to Google communism, tyranny and totalitarianism. Wow, that's all I can say. It's all coming out in the press this week and it's only Tuesday. New powers will give the European Union's criminal intelligence agency, Europol, access to all information held by the police, including evidence files on children, victims, witnesses and other people never even suspected of a crime. Here we see the centralising of power just as mandated in the Maastricht and Lisbon treaties. We showed yesterday the paramilitary police in action in Greece and Eurogen 4, the EU's elite militarised police force, in our new film, Betrayed. It is important to understand two things, then you will realise that we are well on the road to a European police state. Number one, under the Lisbon Treaty, the rule of law applies. This means that you cannot do something unless the law permits it. This is very different to the British legal system, which renders you free to do as you wish unless the law forbids it. And point two, the police commissioner elections. Now, these were enacted on around 14% voter turnout, but they placed policing structures in line with those throughout the EU and replaced the democratic nine-plus seated councillors called the local police authority with a single individual. Speaking of centralising, let's touch briefly on the idea of a one-world government. Now, I'll skim this as it's outside the scope of our work here at the unit, but this article shows how this loose centralising structure is operated and heralds back to the United Nations. In our legislation section, we have this new report which implements the United Nations Responsibility to Protect initiative. We've got more in-depth material on the relationship between the UN and the EU in our video library. Search for Rosa Corey or The Green Mask. More in our postbag last week. This time we have a letter from Peter Simmons in response to my report on the horsemeat scandal. Peter says... What you have not pointed out is that the horsemeat scandal is the direct result of Brussels taking over competency for food safety. 
Prior to this, competence passing to Brussels, the UK had a system of government inspectors who physically tested foodstuffs and enforced rigorous standards. The EU system is self-regulation, based on a paper trail through the incredibly complex supply chain. In a nutshell, at any stage of the process the paperwork can be doctored, but until now, providing the paperwork appeared correct, the recipient wholesaler was in the clear. EU inspectors have been checking the paperwork and not testing the meat. This lax system was quickly spotted and exploited by criminal gangs who have made millions of euros by fraudulently passing off food unfit for human consumption and mislabeling. Of course, as is the norm, the EU is taking credit for tightening things up after the horse has bolted. Thanks, Peter, for taking the time to write in on this topic. Today in our video library, we have this highly polished video by the European Union which attempts to explain the institutions of the EU. Designed as an educational video, it does this very well indeed. However, there are some issues surrounding the multilingual nature of some of the interviews. However, as Mr Barroso states himself, and I quote, We come from our member states, but we are not here representing our governments or our countries. We are here trying to integrate. He then goes on to say, it is the European Commission that has the right to come with the proposals for legislation. You should note that neither you or I have any democratic influence on the Commission. Neither we nor our MPs can affect those positions. The 27 commissioners are appointed via internal selection. This is very interesting and informative video and given the deep legal and governance control that the EU has exerted over the British people in the last 40 years, isn't it a little surprising it has taken so long to tell the people who govern them? Now also worthy of detailed note is EU President Herman von Rompuy's speech to the press. Note when he says, There is the political will to break some taboos and find an agreement. That sounds very belligerent and undemocratic, don't you think? Rick Timmis, for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the E Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Join us in our live question time style online show, The Unit Interactive. Broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+, links to the community page are below. <laughs>